Good morning, everybody. My name is Inon El Roy, and I am the head of the Israel Economic Mission in New York. On behalf of my partners, the Israel Economic Missions globally, embassies, consulates, Sheba Tel Shomer Hospital, top 10 rated hospital in the world, a man holding nursing homes, and the Israeli Export and Cooperation Institute, I'm excited to welcome you to this very important and timely webinar. I'm just looking on the chat and I'm so excited to see people from all over the place, be it from all the states in the US, China, Peru, Qatar, um, India, Italy, Australia, welcome you all. Today is World Health Day in the US. How fitting it is to gather here together on this very meaningful day. As the coronavirus continues to spread and impact all of us, all our lives, our thoughts are with you and with your families at this time. I also wanted to express our deep gratitude to all the entire healthcare community who are on the front lines working tirelessly to save lives as well as the first responders. And you know, something which is not very obvious these days, or, and these days has become true, all the people that help us to buy food and to continue our uh, life these days. They not used to be heroes and we need to thank them and to protect them too. During these ordinary times, we must seek ordinary solutions. With this in mind, clinical experts from Ark Sheba and their nursing homes partner, Amal Holding, will present best practices and technologies to employ at this critical time in geriatric departments, senior home housing, as well as protecting our parents, family, and uh, teams. We will also be hearing from CEOs of six Israeli digital health startups who will demonstrate how their solutions are being utilized to address COVID-19 with special focus on elder care. Just before starting with the program, please be advised that Israel operates 44 economic missions globally. These missions are non-for-profit organizations that are aimed at bringing together Israeli companies and global partners. Sheba, Amal Holding, and the six companies are great examples of how Israeli technologies can help you do a better and more efficient job will be demonstrated soon. Please feel free to reach out to us from the country that you are based to explore the thousands of Israeli startups and companies offering innovative solutions. In addition, please feel free to visit our global website. I wish all of us an interesting webinar and quick return to our normal lives. I would like to ask Lital Schneiderman, Director of Business Development with Ark Sheba, to launch the discussion. Thank you. Good evening and good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us and thank you, Inon, for a great opening and for helping organizing this session. And for those of you who don't, who are not familiar with ARC, ARC is Sheba's innovation arm and it stands for Accelerate, Redesign and Collaborate. And we take this approach even during these days, um, face 19 and trying to apply this together with our ecosystem and innovation infrastructure in finding innovative solutions um, in help uh, coping with uh, COVID-19. Today we will be focusing on our telemedicine approach, mainly uh, aim for elderly care and I'm happy to introduce Dr. Galia Barkei, our head of telemedicine, to elaborate on this unique model, followed by uh, Dr. Gadi Segal, whom I'll introduce uh, afterwards, and Tovi Kamon from Amal. After the uh, more informative session, we will continue with the startup session. So, Dr. Barkei, the floor Hi. is yours. Hi, I'm so pleased to be here with uh, so many people from around the globe. 
and I'm really excited about it. So just a little bit uh, about Shiba before I dig into uh, what we've done in telemedicine. So um, as you know, just a second, yeah. So let me share with you a little bit, uh, some facts about uh, Shiba. Um, as you know, or you may, may not know, Shiba is not only uh, one of the 10 best uh, hospitals uh, in the world as chosen by uh, the Newsweek, but also is the biggest hospital in Israel. It has uh, about 120 uh, departments, uh, more than 1,500 licensed beds, and 95,000 inpatients every year. So it's really, really a big hospital. And it's always been a, a major center for medical research. However, in the last few years, as Lital said, we've developed a new concept of, of innovation uh, for uh, medical research, which is named uh, ARC for uh, Accelerate, uh, Redesign Healthcare, and uh, Collaborate. As we do, uh, we work as an open campus. So we've launched uh, this, uh, this uh, concept and um, uh, we have created this different uh, hubs that prioritize uh, digital health and open innovation. Uh, you can see uh, most of them here. I'm the head of the telemedicine hub. And as such, uh, I will try to talk to you about especially how we did with telemedicine uh, uh, using our telemedicine efforts that we've already launched before uh, to uh, deal with the coronavirus. So, you know, when this, when, when this corona crisis started, we, we were asking ourselves, is it time for innovation now? Or should we wait until everything goes uh, back? The tendency, of course, is to be totally engaged in preparing to treat the patients. And we've done a lot of efforts uh, um, in, on, this, uh, on this aspect. As you know, Sheba has prepared uh, vastly for, uh, for patient. It has created many uh, new wards, an ICU ward, a psychiatric ward, and a, a new uh, internal medicine hospital. Dr. Segal, which we'll talk to you later, uh, has actually opened the first uh, internal medicine ward for COVID-19 patients. But we understood that during this fight, there are so many unanswered questions that it's imperative to uh, uh, promote innovation, especially during these uh, times of crisis. So uh, all of our hubs are involved in uh, several projects regarding um, uh, COVID-19 solutions, uh, but we've uh, done some efforts in a few frontiers, in a few fronts uh, in telemedicine. I would like to elaborate more on this uh, 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 on these efforts. So the first thing we had to do, we had to open new wards uh, and to care for the first time uh, in, for inpatients with minimal contact. It's the first time that we had to use telemedicine tools to try to treat patients that are inpatients. And that was be because we wanted to protect the staff and therefore to decrease to the minimum the physical contact with the patients. So we, we uh, worked with several solutions for communication via video, for um, monitoring patients uh, from distance and for physical examination of the patients without physical contact. In the first, uh, in the first stage, we did it for one internal ward, but then when, as the hospital opened new uh, and different ward, we try to um, give different tools to answer different needs. And the tools were different in the ICU and in the internal uh, ward. And also, um, for example, in the psychiatric ward. So the, the demands were different and the solutions were different as well. The other uh, thing that we wanted to do is to allow continuity of care for non-corona ambulatory patients because the, the, the worst thing that could happen is that we're, we won't be able now, due to the social distancing uh, measures, we won't be able to take care of our regular patients. So what we did was to launch a very large uh, program of, uh, uh, of outpatient of video, uh, video uh, visits for outpatients and we managed to launch a thousand, more than a thousand uh, staff uh, members 
uh, with our telemedicine project. And nowadays, within two to three weeks, we already have between 600 and 700 video, video visits a day. All our oncologic patients enjoy from this uh, uh, program, many psychiatric, all the pediatric hospital has uh, moved uh, its outpatient uh, services to telemedicine Hello. right now. Uh, can we mute everybody? <laughs> the third effort it was uh, to develop a model for home hospitalization for corona patients. Um, and this we did using our data, uh, Shiba Patient. Patients are monitored from distance. Patients are monitored uh, from distance uh, uh, daily. And uh, I'm happy to say that the Ministry of Health has endorsed this program as is going to offer it through uh, the, the payers uh, for the whole Israeli population. And the fourth effort, of course, is uh, research and innovation. And we've engaged in several, um, several studies with, uh, with other partners, national partner, the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of D Defense and the IDF, and also some companies that you can see here uh, to promote research uh, in the areas of telemedicine, uh, engaged in finding solutions for diagnosing or monitoring COVID-19 patients. So uh, we really have a toolkit of, of, of uh, tools that we're using to monitor, to do physical examination, to manage the patients and to communicate with the patient uh, that we use uh, for several scenarios in several uh, ways. Uh, I, I would like to transfer now the talk to Dr. Gadi Segal to talk more about the elderly population, why in fact uh, the home hospitalization is so critical for these patients, especially during COVID, and to tell uh, to tell us more about the the project that we we uh, are going to that we're promoting this day with the Mal Holdings. Uh, Gadi, just a second. Doctor Segel has to be in his ward because he has some deteriorating patients. He'll be with us in a second. Gadi? Yes, I'm here. Okay. I'm here. Can you see me? Yes. Hi. Hi. Okay. Should I start because I'm still seeing the, the, the slide? Go ahead, go ahead, you should start. Okay, so thank you very much for uh, this opportunity. And um, as uh, it was stated before, we have a very, very unique experience now uh, using our telemedicine tools in order to treat the COVID-19 patients. I'm heading an internal medicine which already uh, treated uh, over 150 patients, which are mostly uh, moderate to severe patients. And indeed, uh, it is a new world that enables us to give medicine to our uh, patients, which is in the, under the, the heading of restrictive medicine. And when we are obliged to give restrictive medicine, uh, our way to ensure quality of care is not only by using the most experienced physicians uh, that we have, but also uh, uh, taking uh, use of the best telemedicine tools. Now, relating to the elderly population, as you well know, uh, one of the most uh, dangerous, uh, endangered populations are the elderly. Uh, advanced age is the by far the most hazardous risk factor for uh, becoming severe COVID-19 patients. The mortality rate uh, exceeds uh, 20% in such populations. And we always say that advanced age is a risk factor, 
but also comorbidities are a risk factor. Now, most patients with advanced age automatically carry significant comorbidities, so the differentiation is non-relevant. So when we are dealing with the elderly, for one, we must be uh, very, very careful regarding the risk of contracting uh, uh, COVID-19. That's for one. Uh, second, we must go on treating their comorbidities. The fact that COVID-19 appeared does not uh, render cardiovascular uh, disease or respiratory disease um, un, un, no, unrelevant. So uh, the fact that we have uh, worked with uh, Amal, uh, we have uh, devised a plan to give telemedicine services to elderly at the elderly home. And our preliminary plan was that uh, we did not know that the corona will appear. And we had a plan to give them a telemedicine services and in-home hospitalization in their home, in the elderly home at Amal, without being uh, physically in the hospital. The, the, the original plan was to do the triage in our emergency department and then decide whether these patients should be staying at hospital or they could go back to the home and be uh, treated with telemedicine. Nowadays, when the risk of uh, COVID-19 is becoming so high and the mortality rates are so high, these elderly should, be, should stay confined in their home. And even the mere uh, arrival to the emergency department is life-threatening. And therefore, we are changing this model and we are uh, planning to execute a full telemedicine program for this elderly population. The first triage will be made via a televisit by a physician, once again, an experienced physician, an internal medicine physician that can gain most information via uh, anamnesis and history taking, that can use the tools for basic and fundamental physical examination and get a decision whether indeed the patient should arrive to the hospital or can the treatment be given in the home. And this is extremely important because taking these uh, elderly out of their home uh, equals uh, putting them in a very, very high risk for contracting COVID-19. Uh, therefore, uh, I think that like COVID-19 has accelerated the whole scheme of telemedicine, the whole scheme of uh, Zoom conversations like we have right now, I think that the contribution to the acceleration of teletreating elderly populations in their homes uh, should be extremely accelerated. And thank God that we have now the tools to execute this, uh, these plans. If there are more details to be uh, brought, I, I will be very happy to do so. Dr. Segal, if you can stay on the line, we'll give a chance to our audience um, to um, send some questions our way through the chat. And if there's no immediate question, um, I will refer this to uh, Tovi Kramon from Amal. So give us uh, two seconds, please. Um, and I see here that people want us to share the PDF at the end, and we will do so. Um, and uh, please continue sending questions our way. We will answer them afterwards. Um, so Dr. Segal, thank you for joining us. Uh, we might call you again soon, and I will uh, I invite uh, Tovi Kamon, uh, who leads the innovation in Amal Holdings, to give a five minutes overview on our new model. Tovi? Hello, hello everyone. 
I'm happy to be here. Good morning, good afternoon, and uh, great timing. And just share with you a short presentation. You see it? Okay. Um, so uh, I will present uh, in short presentation um, the Amal Holdings activities, uh, continuing with our activity to cope with the COVID-19. So uh, Amal Holdings is the largest private company in Israel to operate in such a vast variety of health services sectors for all age groups. Our vision is to improve the quality of life for all our clientele while utilizing its long-standing professional experience. Um, we, uh, Amal's Home Care Division, provides nursing services and uh, caregiving assistance to the elderly. And uh, our nursing home, um, we have uh, Amal operates Israeli really largest nationwide network for a, of nursing home and geriatric hospitals. Each hospital provides alternative treatment solutions as well as substantial range of departments and treatments. Um, we have a mental uh, health division and uh, health and well being. Continuing um, the academy and innovation center. I will uh, jump to the COVID-19 and I would like to share with you how, um, how we cope with uh, this challenging and I may say a little bit frightening times, but we're handling it. So um, we have built medical and administrative protocols to state of uh, quarantine caused by the outbreak of COVID-19. From, from the very first day, we did a few major acts. We prevented any kind of contact between visitors, whether, whether they were family, friend, or personal uh, private caretakers. We check fever for our workers upon every entry to the nursery home. We change our shifts to be 12 hours long, and we have two shifts instead of three to prevent more people coming in, in contact with the elderly residents. All the teams are using, of course, it's basic, gloves and masks permanently. In every nursery home, we arranged a room or more, depending on the size of the nursery home, dedicated for new residents and also for residents who are returning from a hospital treatment. And those residents are supposed to stay in these rooms for at least 14 days to make sure they are not sick. We prepared, of course, special equipment and needed. In case of our staff becoming infected during the pandemic, we prepared three different emergency teams to take their place organized by the level. The first group is our employees. The second group is volunteers. And the third group is family members that approved. Of course, all approve their participant and have gone through check, making sure that they are capable of doing the job as we need them. And the team, of course, are constantly going through lectures to identify the symptoms and general behavior. The cooperation with the Shiba Hospital is very meaningful to keep our resident health safe. Seeing as it seems, it means the stay in the nursery home is very important. And while getting the medical care by the telemedicine is a huge change. And, um, and we are all looking for it. I think that's it. And if anyone have any question, I will be happy to answer. Okay. And we're looking at the chat box at the moment. Um, we do have to keep um, on time, and uh, if there are no urgent questions, we will reply through the chat. Um, I see one coming up. Can you freeze the screen? In which elderly home does it really happening in Israel? So the one 
that the one site that we're aiming to implement this model is uh, situated in Ranana. Yes. And uh, Tovi, can you refer, give some numbers about the number of uh, tenants in uh, the center? In, in Amal Sharon in Ranana, we have uh, around 500 residents. In, uh, it's, it's, it's the biggest uh, nursery home in Israel, and uh, we will do it there in Amal Sharon in Ranana, located Ranana. All right. And um, I see a question to Dr. Segal. Um, who I think had to leave, but we will refer to him, is here. Okay, so Dr. Segal, maybe you can refer to this one. Most of viral transmission in hospitals, etc., from medical providers is in changing rooms and provider lounges. How are you mitigating this issue? Once again, the question, please. Viral transmission in hospital um, is mainly because of changing rooms. Galia, okay. Maybe I can answer it. It's regarding the, the, the infection control and the transmission of viruses through the staff. So we're doing a lot of education now. As you can see, uh, all of us uh, for or, already two weeks or so are wearing masks in the hospital because indeed some of the cases in which staff has been, were, uh, contracted the virus were due to um, to meeting with each other more than from our patients. And it's indeed an issue. We're dealing a lot with this through education. And uh, we're, we're uh, making people now uh, for about two weeks or so wear masks, wash hands. And uh, we're also giving them uh, all the uh, equipment they need uh, for protection. So hopefully they're not transmitting it from each other. We, we haven't met this uh, uh, from changing rooms, but we did meet uh, transmission of the virus through people eating together, because when you eat together in, in, in a group, you, you take off your mask, and that's where we saw it. So we're educating a lot about it. And maybe one last question, um, because we have to move to the startup session. Can you scroll down so I can see the last question? Okay. Okay. So, so when we're talking about uh, when we're talking about our telemedicine program in, in the elderly uh, homes, we're talking about provider to provider. So we're uh, actually uh, the way it works is that the the she Dr. Segal and his staff, the consultants from our uh, tertiary medical center are uh, communicating with the, the nurses and the physicians that are in the nursing homes through telemedicine means, through our uh, uh, telemedicine platform, which is DATOS, uh, through which uh, we can exchange uh, information about vital signs and monitoring. And uh, we use video talks, and we also use uh, 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 machines for equipment for physical examination as uh, my home doc or Taito care to make a true physical examination that can be performed uh, by um, the, the uh, Sheba's uh, healthcare professional as well. In this, in this way, we're making uh, visits that are uh, made of the patient, uh, the treating physician in the home, and uh, the Sheba doctor. Maybe it clarifies things a little bit more. I see a lot of questions about the technologies, some of which we've presented in our latest webinar. So I will ask Amir to share maybe the link to the chat. It um, really gives more details about the model and the technology and how they work together. I encourage you to watch the webinar. Um, but for now, we have to uh, proceed to the startup session and maybe this will be more clear to you. Um, the first uh, startup we would like to present is Uniper. And I invite Rami Kirschbaum, uh, the CEO and co-founder, um, to give a 10 minutes presentation, mainly as our communication, main communication uh, channel with the patient. So Rami. Hey everyone, Nital, thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like, can you hear me? And can you see my screen? 
Very good. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Shiva. Uh, Israel Economic Ministry, Namal. I think setting up uh, uh, such a webinar in such a, in a new world order is so important. Very pleased to share with you what we do. Information sharing in those times is very important. So I'm, I'm Rami. I'm a Unipal CEO and co-founder. Um, and I'm going to share with you uh, how Unipal can help um, addressing patients and uh, older adults in the era of uh, COVID-19. Um, so Unipal empowers older adults to be socially and physically active uh, at home or any place they wish for. Uh, and also healthcare and senior care organization, new ways to deliver care and reduce healthcare utilization. Uh, we operate in the US, in Israel. I'm proud to say that in Israel, we are working with the welfare ministry, uh, where they provide Unipair to people with low social determinants of health. With the health ministry, they are now subsidizing, as a result of COVID-19, the various HMOs, the four HMOs in Israel, to utilize Unipair for all the adults and population at risk. Uh, we are working with different uh, HMOs for hospitalization at home. Obviously, with Chiba Hospital, it's being used as uh, a patient engagement solution for people being hospitalized with COVID-19. Uh, for us, we didn't, we didn't uh, see hospital before as a use case, but suddenly as a result, we, we thought we can bring value and found fantastic partners in Chiba and other hospitals across Israel. We are working with, uh, in the US with payers, home health providers, uh, senior living, CCLC, anybody that has uh, older adults and patients uh, that you want to deliver care. Um, we started by addressing loneliness and social isolation just in the US, and it's a global phenomenon. Loneliness is the root, is the, there are like 50 million people at the age of 65 plus. Almost 50% of them are suffering uh, from social isolation and loneliness. And by now, hey, we know as a result of COVID-19, everybody are now isolated by, you know, even pre-COVID-19, uh, this is the root cause for many health conditions, diabetes, uh, depression, high blood pressure. It's being equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. So whatever we can do to address this root cause actually helps to address other, other uh, health conditions. So when we started, we saw people, older adults, sitting at home, detached from the community, in front of the TV, watching six to eight hours a day TV, um, and feeling isolated. And we said, why not to take the medium they're already used to and turn that into an interactive community? We know there's an opposite correlation between stress level and adoption. So let's take the medium they're already used to and, to, and connect them and turn the TV from a passive device into an interactive device. Uniper today is a cross-platform solution, but definitely the TV is the most accessible one. It's designed for older adults. It's a box connected to any TV, not just a small TV, with a simplified remote and a camera. You don't need to change a source in the TV. It's like an overlay. While you're watching Judge Judy, suddenly you have you know, a reminder about your uh, meeting with your physician. Um, it's, uh, the, the remote includes a built-in mic. It's HIPAA compliant, uh, applicable for healthcare utilization. And if we look at Unipair, basically it's a tech-enabled health and wellness service. We call it many times as a virtual senior living community. It includes three major ingredients. A, it's accessible. We have that over the TV, but over other media. It's very easy to use. You know, um, it's tailored and designed for older adults. Uh, we know a lot of them are with motoric challenges, vision impairments, so we overcome that. B, it's social, it's live and interactive sessions, the wellness sessions we provide, like in a senior living, in the morning. You have yoga session, you meet up with friends, book club, and then uh, meeting a, a doctor or a son or an MP, and it's personalized. The moment you join the service, we learn about the needs and wants, and then we personalize the service in order to maximize the outcome. The first goal was to create uh, a platform that is accessible and easy to use and holistic in order to digitalize care. So from an older adult perspective, we have the TV, it's mobile, web, it's cross-platform. Obviously the TV is the most useful. Um, then we have uh, a management portal, 
that builds the risk profile, the mental, physical, and social risk profile of the person, and we personalize the care. It's a full tele-layer solution. I'm going to uh, describe that in a sec. And then we have a caregiver lab, so he's part of the uh, care plan circle. Unipel is being used, uh, we are providing basically a service to the health partner members uh, that is uh, our service, and then we enable the partner to utilize it once we put a digitalized infrastructure as a telehealth solution. So it allows remote intervention in a very simple way, one-on-one -on -one group session, health education, digitalizing care plan, remote identification of health condition using subjective and objective measures, remote patient assessment. So it's a full kit for a telehealth solution over accessible technology powered by our wellness service. We believe that our wellness service increases the compliance. Our focus is around social, mental, and physical uh, aspects, reduce social isolation and loneliness, for risk reduction and depression, and general health education, um, in order basically uh, to increase the compliance. So we come in, we provide the wellness, and allowing our health partners to provide their medical uh, 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 service. This is a typical weekly routine of an older adult, you know, physical exercise in the morning, seated yoga, uh, laughing yoga, positive thinking, um, general health education, and then meshed into that, the telehealth of the health partner. Just to say that it's a proven formula. On the one end, we have the engagement, which is super high among this target population, 90, 170. So it's across different ages. Um, we have done some studies showing the effectiveness of the service over standard scales by third party, reducing loneliness, depression, and that's being translated into a cost saving to the payer. Our vision is basically to take the best of senior living and make it available at all. So provide an accessible technology, empowering the older adults to be connected, and then it's provide the services for all health and wellness services to the home. It's not just about care delivery, it's also about preventive care. Um, starting from social and physical activity, going through telecare and uh, medication reminders, safety, and by the end, you know, also comfort, being able to order in a simplified way, non-medical services, whether that's hot meals, transportation, which are also very important. Uh, before summarizing, I just say that there are, two vert there are several verticals and use cases that this is being applied, as I said in the beginning. As a tech-enabled health and wellness service, um, we have some users that just sign up for the service without any partner, so it's also applicable for a direct -to consumer. Patient engagement platform. Now we also, uh, 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 is a caring remotely for iris chronic patients. Again, they are the ones that are costing the most, the 10% that cost 90% of the healthcare cost and the healthcare spending. Home hospitalization and rehab, uh, that's another use case that we have implemented. Um, Going back to COVID-19, I want to say that, you know, all of the things that we were, we were addressing before uh, COVID-19 uh, are actually very relevant to Unipro Solution, which is the social isolation, which is a major issue for homebound people, definitely now with the COVID-19. Um, the mental challenges, a lot of the patients are without any symptoms. Um, so what you need is to address the depression, anxiety, um, that's being done by the wellness service. There's a need for virtual care. Unipel is able to be a fast setup, simple to use, limited training, quick deployment. That's what we needed to do also with Chiba, uh, quick deployment so it can be used tomorrow morning in a, in a quick time frame. And focusing on the one that costs the most, and mostly, you know, a lot of them, they don't have smartphones. Uh, and if they have, you know, they're using the phone rather than the smart aspect of it. Tablets may be of an issue because it's touchscreen and there's some motoric challenges. So trying to cover all the aspects and overcome the accessibility in order to provide a solution, um, definitely during COVID-19, but even before and after. Uh, this is uh, my email, would be happy to basically provide uh, more information, feel free to reach out um, and so we can find ways we can help 
uh, during this uh, challenging time. Thank you. Thank you, Rami, and we will refer the questions to you as they come, but I would like to ask uh, Dr. Segal um, to answer some questions that just arrived and I think um, um, could be an interest to all. So the first one is which are the most important parameters to monitor in patients suspected COVID? Dr. Segal? Hi. Okay. Uh, during this time, uh, I advise to daily monitor temperature and, sat and oxygen saturation on a daily basis. During this time currently, every increase in temperature, every decrease in oxygen saturation should be considered as COVID-19 infection until proven otherwise. Right now, there shouldn't be any differential diagnosis. And therefore, I think that daily routine measurements of temperature and the saturation, which are very, very simple and very, very quick, will give you a notion of which elderly patients should be screened for COVID-19. And most importantly, which elderly should be immediately isolated from other elderly until uh, you get a negative answer. There shouldn't be any other differential diagnosis in this, if these simple vital signs are pathological. Thank you, Gadi. And um, there's another question. Before I go into a question uh, dealing with uh, medications, uh, another one that just came in and uh, somehow related to the last one, is about gadgets that uh, available gadgets and uh, monitors that are able to follow these parameters. More digital ones. Measuring uh, temperature and measuring oxyge oxygen saturation are no longer considered as gadgets. These are very, very simple. Uh, items, very cheap items that can be um, um, brought to each home, whether it's a private home or an elderly uh, home. And uh, some of them are um, uh, transmitting their data and some of them can be easily be, uh, a message can be SMS or to a nurse or a physician on, tele, on televisit. And therefore, uh, these vit basic vital signs uh, should be considered as uh, high-tech technology. These are very basic. Next one is, we are using, I'm guessing this uh, came from another hospital. We are using uh, Placanil, although no overt outcomes. We will launch next week Plaquenil. <laughs> so this Plaquenil. is my answer. This is my answer. Ah, ah okay, right, right. right. I already sorry, sorry. wrote you the answer. <laughs> are, are you using Plaquenil and ZPAC results? What are the results? We are using Plaquenil as on an empiric basis based on the uh, reports by the Chinese. Uh, these are not very sound uh, evidence, but these are the best evidence that we have right now. And we are prescribing Plaquenil to all moderate to severe patients. Uh, we are giving 400 twice on the first day and 200 uh, twice daily for another nine days uh, if there are any, aren't any contraindications. Next week, we will launch a clinical study which compares uh, either Plaquenil with Plaquenil and combined with azithromycin. Right now, uh, these are treatments are being based on empiric uh, assumptions only. Okay, thank you, Dr. Segal. I see a lot of questions coming your way, but we all know you're very busy uh, these days. And so with that being said, I, I will ask you to um, provide some answers offline. I'll be in touch with you and we'll send those to everyone who uh, shared those questions with us.
and uh, I'd like to move to the next startup named Datos, uh, our telemedicine platform, and invite Uri Betosh, the CEO, um, to give an overview on the solution and also how it is relevant to elderly care. Uri? Thank you, Mital. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Um, thank you, and it's a, it is a pleasure to be here, and thank you for the Shiba support um, in, in Dedos and, of course, in, in all the, the um, COVID patients in this situation. Um, my name is Uri Betesh, and I'm the founder and CEO of Dedos Health. Um, Dedos is a fully automated remote care and a telemedicine platform. Um, the company, it's, um, the, the company provides um, remote care uh, on a regular basis to hospitals and pharmaceutical companies. And since the, the corona outbreak um, started, the Shiba Hospital um, designed their own home hospitalization program, very similar to what Dr. Segal just mentioned, um, to be deployed um, at home. Since then, um, the Ministry of Health in Israel actually um, contracted um, the platform and it's now being deployed throughout um, all, is, um, all, is, all positive uh, 19 patients in Israel. And it's already also live um, in, uh, um, in the US um, and we're actually going to launch it um, also in Italy, in Milan. Um, Dados, from a remote care, uh, from a COVID-19 perspective, Dados has two solutions in place at the moment. The first one, which I mentioned, is the home hospitalization. It's basically where we um, send, um, we send the patients a text message with a link to download our app. Um, when they download the app, they have an assessment survey, and then they have the ability to report their temperature, blood pressure, um, and pulse ox, in addition to um, symptom surveys that will be sent to them twice a day, and the ability to do video calls um, and emergency um, call number all under one app. All this information going into our data engine, data engine and being um, analyzed to who, who is the most severe patients out of the entire population. The care team on the other end of the side, basically they have a full dashboard of, the, of all the patients sorted according to the most severe. And they have the ability to either um, do, either do um, a video call with them or just to send them, text mess uh, send them uh, messages, um, whether it will be text messages or inside the app. And by doing so, we basically enable a large scale of care um, or, or remote care for the positive COVID patients outside of the hospital. And this is really important when we, when we try to protect the hospital um, um, care teams from uh, positive patients. And something that we, we, we learned um, lately, that we also allow the isolated medical team to provide care during the isolation. Um, and I think the most important uh, um, the, the, the most important thing here is that we, we prevent the hospital to be overloaded, to be swamped by patients, and only the severe, uh, only the acute patients will, will be transmitted um, to the hospital, while remaining, um, the rest of the patients um, will remain at home, and we're still going to provide them care at home. So that's um, option number one, the home hospitalization. In addition to that, um, we also provide um, virtual care or telemedicine. Today in Shiba, more than 1,000 physicians actually using uh, virtual care on, on Dedos. We, we, we can deploy that solution in a matter of a day. And basically what we do, we transform all the clinics, all the ambulatory clinics in the hospital to be virtual with one very unique um, um, capability. We allow video chat without downloading an app on the patient's side. So if you think about all the elderly, people that, um, that do have a smartphone, but going through the, the process of downloading an app, registra uh, reg registration to, to, to the process, um, all of that 
usually um, um, it's a hurdle for them, it's a challenge for them. And with our solution, we just send them a text message. Pressing the link in that text message will open a video call with their physician without downloading an app and we get, without going through any registration process. Now, this is really important. Um, this is how the, the, the solution looks. You can see the dashboards and the, uh, for the care teams and the mobile app uh, for the patients. Um, from uh, from the, the way it looks, uh, for, from the process perspective, I, I described the process of sending the text message to, to the patients to download the app. And from that moment on, the app basically manage, manages the patients automatically and only contacting the physicians or the care teams in an emergency. Um, as I mentioned before, a full video um, capabilities, um, vital monitoring, symptom management, um, and uh, an emergency call, all available under one app. This is a view of the app. You can see that when I'm logging in, I have the things to do at the top, um, and then my vitals that I'm tracking. I can log in my temperature. And there was a question here about connected devices. The platform itself has the ability to work with connected devices, and we do that on a regular basis. However, in the COVID-19 uh, COVID uh, situation, we believe that it's not going to be smart to use connected devices for a couple of reasons. The first one, scale. Connected devices cost a lot of money. And from a scaling perspective, I don't think it's going to make sense with somebody going to pay for that. And the second um, issue is the ability, for, uh, the ability to bring back the, the, the devices because they cost more than regular devices, so you want to take them back. And then there is all the process around sanitation and logistics, another big hurdle. The ability to manually enter the vitals is very easy on this app. And, um, and sometimes it's also easier for, for the elderly when they don't need to, to go through the pairing process. Um, you can also see here the daily symptom questionnaire. Again, very simple, click, 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 submit. And the ability to do video calls. Oops. Um, that's the view of the dashboard. We can see the patients and the, and the alerts um, on each one of the patients sorted according to uh, um, the severity. The symptom questionnaire that I mentioned before has a mechanism behind, behind it. So, each symptom has a different score. And when I'm looking at the population level, I can look at the score itself, um, allowing me to, to sort and to manage um, much more, um, a, um, a lot of patients in a, in a much more efficient um, manner. And um, this is the view of the platform itself. Um, as I mentioned before, we have the ability to use connected devices integrated directly into our mobile app. Um, our cloud is fully HIPAA compliant. We can be live with any of those programs in the United States or anywhere, but in the United States um, in a matter of one day or two days. It's all day. It, it, we, we put together a dedicated cloud for you. Um, as I mentioned before, fully HIPAA, HIPAA compliant. And, um, and we just deploy that in upstate New York, a hospital system, uh, five hospital system. Uh, they already have more than I think 200 patient, 200 positive corona patients on the platform, managing them in a very, very low resource uh, um, requirements on their end. Thank you very much. And um, you can contact us um, during, um, via our website or using that um, email, uh, info email here. Thank you. Uri, if you can stay for one more minute. Um, I see that uh, you're answering the questions referred to you at the chat, so thank you for that. But still, a uh, question that uh, was raised here. Um, is it a free service of the app or do they have to uh, purchase the service? And if you can refer to individual versus the healthcare systems, and we'll end with that. So please. Um, Datos is a B2B company. So we, on, on a regular days, we charge the, the health providers or the pharmaceutical companies um, on, on the service. 
So um, for the for the end patients, it's basically free. And in, in these days, we, we are work, working on a cost base. So it's very, very um, attractive from a, from, a pricing, uh, from a pricing standpoint of view. And it's, um, the app is out there in, in the app stores. You, every, anyone can download it. The only thing that um, the patient needs is the organization code. So we will know to which organization to direct the, um, the, the data. Okay, thank you, Uri. And uh, please continue to monitor the chat as questions are being referred to you. And uh, we would like to move to the next uh, startups. All the startups uh, from now on uh, are mainly uh, focusing in monitoring um, different uh, aspects and technologies. I'd like to invite EarlySense, uh, Guy Megger, CTO and VP R&D from EarlySense. Uh, we'll uh, give an overview on the company and their use cases. So, Guy? Hi, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I hope you see my uh, slides. Uh, my name is Guy Mager, the CTO and General Manager, as well as the VP R&D of EarlySense. I'm with the company for the past 14 years. Our vision is to deliver improved outcomes via our contact-free sensor that you put under the mattress and the advanced analytics that we have. And throughout the continuum of care. So what our continuous monitoring does. For early detection of patient deterioration, we are able to monitor heart rate, uh, heart patterns, heart rate variability. We have, uh, uh, it's highly validated, uh, FDA approved and uh, FDA cleared and uh, CE approved. Uh, we have threshold clock threshold crossing that you could uh, adapt to each patient, but also indications about uh, trends, even if it didn't get out of the threshold. Same for the respiration, which is very important for uh, COVID-19 patients. So we can calculate the respiration rate with high accuracy, uh, the threshold crossing uh, as well, and also indication of significant trend patterns, uh, changes in the respiration, including different uh, and variety of uh, respiration uh, 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 morbidities and uh, respiration uh, patterns that uh, we see. I'll talk about it a bit more in the next slides. We also can help in elderly, in, uh, elderly care. We also uh, help with the resident safety. Our system allowed to uh, detect uh, uh, patients getting out of bed. We have uh, six levels of better exit sensitivity to allow to uh, answer any type of patient, uh, even delayed bed exit if needed uh, for wandering patients. And uh, we do have an additional visual uh, indication of potential exits for patients with high risk. We also have the pressure ulcer prevention, uh, which uh, starts with the motion analysis. Uh, we are indicating uh, patients that are not uh, turning around in bed that has the uh, uh, risk to develop a pressure ulcer. And once uh, uh, we identify this patient, we suggest, uh, the system suggests to uh, uh, have a patient turn reminders every two hours or more, it's uh, configurable. And uh, whenever you change the posture of the patient, uh, our system will uh, uh, look at the data and uh, uh, actually, uh, validate that uh, the posture is effective and that we see that the pressure map is different. Our system also allows to uh, measure sleep, uh, full sleep uh, staging, uh, all four cycles of sleep, uh, deep sleep, light, light sleep, uh, REM and wake, um, many parameters, time to fall asleep, numbers of, of awakenings, sleep efficiency and so on. Uh, and we do have sleep score and sleep apnea detection, including uh, high correlation with the apnea hypopnea index. So the specific needs for uh, COVID-19. Uh, at the beginning, you can see that COVID-19 patients are massive amount of patients. So uh, one of the major needs is to screen large scale of patients. And while screening them, we uh, can help indicating changes in patients with that have minor symptoms uh, or without any symptoms and are changing their uh, status. 
as well as uh, identify symptomatic patients with high risk to deteriorate. Uh, uh, we see uh, patients with respiratory depress, uh, distress, we see uh, uh, sept septic uh, shock that can happen uh, and uh, other, uh, um, other parameters that uh, we can, uh, our, our early indication uh, help to identify. We help keeping the caregiver safe with minimal exposure to contamination. Uh, it's contact free without the need of a patient to comply. And we have the remote view and control from the central station outside the ward. It's very relevant to respiratory patient. Uh, our uh, respiratory rate is very accurate. We detect changes in respiratory, pattern, in respiratory patterns. Uh, and we detect patterns of labored breathing and respiratory depression. Uh, and it's easy to implement it in a home-like environment, assisted living, hotels, isolated patients uh, at home, uh, etc. cetera. Um, and it's easy to integrate our solution to different platforms. So how does the solution looks like? It starts with a sensor that you put under the mattress. This sensor is a totally non-invasive, totally uh, passive, so it doesn't have any radiation. The sensor is connected to the bedside unit, which is uh, continuously monitoring uh, all parameters. A uh, bedside unit can come in two different form factors, the inside and early sense two. As a result, uh, we're able to continuously uh, go through the, the data. We have a database uh, uh, of more than 1 million patients that have been monitored, monitored on our patients. And we bought a lot of reference data uh, um, uh, from, with hospitals that we've been uh, installed at uh, from uh, par partners networks and others. Um, and we have a variety of uh, parameters that we can extract. It's the rhythm of the heart and respiration rate and also the motion uh, changes the variability, the shape, the intensity, and special patterns. So we built AI predictive models based on those parameters that allows us to early detect, which leads to a, a remote uh, indication, uh, which, is ha which happens early and with very low false positive uh, alerts. Uh, so the caregiver can go ahead and intervene. Uh, once you intervene earlier, so you are influencing the outcome. And as you can see here, um, the improved outcomes is uh, something that's uh, proven both clinically and financially, and we have lots of, uh, um, lots of evidence for that. Early Sense were founded in 2004. It's installed in over 250 hospitals and skilled nursing facilities. Uh, uh, we have uh, blue chip hospitals. Uh, Shiba is one of our clients, but we have also Mount, Mount Sinai and others. Uh, we're FDA cleared, we're CE approved. We have more than 32 patents uh, granted, and we have the largest heart rate and respiration rate medical uh, database. As an example, I can share with you one of our uh, saves, one of the saves that our system uh, uh, demonstrating. Uh, here you can see a patient that has a respiratory rate alert that led uh, to identify worsening pneumonia uh, and the timely intervention really helped uh, uh, with this patient uh, and led to uh, an early intervention and early treatment, treatment of the patient, which led to a better outcome. Um, and if we're talking about outcomes, we're talking about uh, validated results made on uh, uh, clinical studies, uh, some of them were uh, published in peer-reviewed papers. Uh, in the acute settings, hospitals, we see uh, about almost 90% less code blue events, so we actually save lives. Uh, half of the patients transferred to ICU is preventable, and we are helping to prevent that. And also 10% of the med surge, uh, uh, length of stay is shortening because you know better uh, regarding the patient condition and you, you're able to intervene earlier and you're able to uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, to, to let uh, the patient home uh, earlier so he can go and uh, uh, 
get back to his life. Guy, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we have to wrap up soon. So two minutes, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, again, in post-acute care, uh, skilled nursing facilities and uh, rehabs, we have the uh, we, sh we demonstrate about 20% re uh, percent reduction in uh, readmissions, 28 unplanned hospital tra transfers, and half the fall are prevented. Uh, throughout the continuum of care, we have hospital beds. Hiram is one of our partners, so Hiram can sell you some trail bed with early sense inside, or you can have early sense too. You could have inside that's uh, without the display uh, next to the bed. Uh, and in the, it, it also fits to the post-acute environment and in the home, we're working on a, releasing the NUMI uh, project uh, that allows us to monitor patients at home. Uh, everything is usually, uh, uh, get, you get the data into the dashboard uh, and the control point. So thank you. Uh, uh, you can uh, approach us. Uh, via the site uh, that we have and for any question i'll be happy to answer okay thank you guy we will um proceed with uh, my own doc and i'd like to invite shabtai negri the ceo and ask you guy if you can take the questions in the chat uh mainly uh people are asking how reliable are the values of the parameters and if there are any evidence-based and the answer is yes. So if you can take those questions, please. And Shabtai, please. Sure, thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you, Galia. Thank you for everybody uh, sharing the time with me here. Uh, my name is Shabtai, and I am uh, the CEO of my home dog company. And I will take the next five minutes to share with you what my home dog is doing. So my home doc develops a primary care uh, medical product that actually allows a contact between a uh, physician and the patients without the need for a face-to-face -face encounter. Meaning that if you feel that if you feel not good, you don't need to go to the clinics. You can do all the examination at home and engage your physician uh, through your mob mobile phone. So <clears throat> actually we want to avoid uh, unnecessary uh, primary, primary care clinics visits or ER visits. And today uh, during the Corona time, the need of uh, such technology, it's uh, very clear to every one of us. We don't want to go to a place that other people might uh, suffer from uh, even flu, not just only the corona. And if we go there and we don't need to be there, we can uh, be contaminated uh, from other people that are at the same place. So remote patient monitoring becoming more critical than ever when we are facing uh, with uh, new viruses like the corona. Uh, and we know that uh, even the current wave will pass still even if it's not uh, a disease like Corona, still we don't want to be there when we can do everything from home and then we are more, more safe and the chance that we will be contaminated will, does not exist. So what we are bringing as an offering to deal with that, so we develop a device that contains four sensors and can implement nine physical examinations. And if I define it more specifically for the corona, the most important three examinations are the pass oximeter, as Dr. Segal mentioned before. Uh, this is a very important parameter to realize if a person can suffer from uh, the corona. So through the pass oximeter, we provide the saturation level and the heart rate. Then we have <clears throat> the IR thermometer that can measure your body temperature. And we also have the stethoscope that can measure the signals and the sounds of your lungs if you are developing a, a pulmonary, a pulmonary uh, findings, then the physician can uh, find it and listen to the audio uh, 
audio that we are recording. Now, <clears throat> the solution that we are providing and we, the, the, uh, that we develop is mainly uh, targeted to be uh, a device that every family uh, will afford to buy. It. And we designed it in a way that it is connected with your mobile phone. It doesn't have to be, we don't need to have a physical connection between the phone and the device. All the measurements that you will be doing, the pulse oximeter, measuring the saturation, the body, te uh, the, uh, the body temperature, as well as the stethoscope, the device doesn't have to be connected to the phone. And the connection between the phone to the device is through the Bluetooth. So you can do all the examinations like you see here in the, in the left image, uh, and all the data will be passed through the Bluetooth to your mobile phone. We do have additional, uh, additional uh, sensor. It's the otoscope for taking videos from your ears. Uh, and for this examination, this is the only examination that you actually need to connect our device to the smartphone because the image sensors, uh, it's all the, uh, exists on the smartphone. Why we did that? We did that because if you design the device to be a standalone device, then you need to implement in the, in the device uh, many components like the display, the image sensors, the Wi-Fi, and all these components uh, will end, you will end up with a device which is uh, significantly more expensive compared to my home dog device that we have now. So this was the idea why uh, uh, in first uh, term, we should use the smartphone as part of the entire solution. So the entire solution does not contain only the hardware, it contains only the software side. And we have two applications. Uh, one application is on the patient side. When uh, you, can, uh, you can get into the application, you have a tutorial and you can choose what type of examination you would like to do. And you can do them one by one and you can choose how many you would like to do. You don't need to do everything. You can choose the ones and, uh, and do that. In the application, we have tutorials. It's a short video clips and uh, simple instructions that when you do it for the first time, it guides you through all the examinations and it helps you to do it for the first time. It's an easy, it's easy, it's not a difficult process. Uh, but we are supporting and guiding uh, the patients for doing it for the first time. On the other side, we have the, phys uh, the physician side. We have the application on the, uh, on the physician side that you can get the data and uh, analyze the, uh, <clears throat> the data that was recorded and uh, coming back to the patients with a feedback uh, based on the data that they analyzed. There are two modes of uh, operating the device. One mode is offline mode, asynchronic mode, when you can do all the measurements, all the examinations uh, by yourself. You upload everything to the cloud. Uh, the physician will uh, 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 download it, and then he can come back to you with the answer. Uh, Shabtai, Shabtai, yes. sorry to interrupt. Uh, yes. If you can wrap up in a minute. Please. Yes, I can. Okay. Yes, I can do. Thank you. Uh, the second mode is synchronic mode, that you can have the physician uh, online with you, when you are doing all the examinations and uh, is supporting you and sharing everything with you. I did it, Galia. Good job. <laughs> Thank you so much and good luck. And we're looking forward to collaborate. So the next one is Aulitics. And I'd like to invite Gil Zafrir, the CEO, to Hello. provide overview. Good oh, no. noon, uh, good evening, everybody. Thanks to the organizers and to the patient uh, listeners uh, so far. Um, I will represent a segment of the elderly at home and at senior livings who are still exposed to other uh, risks uh, besides in, in parallel to the uh, corona uh, risk to this uh, population. We're a software-only uh, uh, company based in Israel and in uh, Boston, uh, US. We are analyzing those uh, uh, risky elderly under a continuum of uh, 
data coming from off-the-shelf uh, wearables, uh, combining personal physiology and motion uh, uh, signals to have those to build a personal pattern for each and every user, and then alert the caregivers about uh, uh, changes in those uh, uh, patterns and intervene in time. Uh, or, or intervene in specific uh, risky uh, detected events. Uh, the type of uh, events we, we, we do uh, uh, monitor and alert and support the, the caregivers are uh, continuous uh, for risk assessment. We do a daily basis of uh, potential health uh, deviation, as I said, from the one personal norm, and we have studied that the baseline of each and every user is very strong uh, uh, starting points for alerting about those who are outliers on, on a daily basis. Uh, we do have a superior automatic fall uh, detection uh, capabilities based again on the combo of physiology and motion all together, and we allow also personal emergency, including uh, GPS, uh, 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 the use cases we're monitoring are uh, daily uh, health and risk assessment regarding fall on a continuous basis and a personal basis, automatic fall detection, and personal emergency in a, a location. Uh, we're speaking about uh, users who are basically about uh, 80 years old and, and above that cannot do self-reporting. Uh, so the simplicity of wearing uh, uh, and good compliance with uh, off-the-shelf uh, wearable, which also supports, you know, daily uh, uh, wellness and fitness uh, indication is of uh, importance. We upload, we stream all the information up to our cloud and then share uh, uh, the indications to the caregivers per the workflow of each and every uh, uh, provider, health provider. Uh, this is the basis of cross correlation of the daily abnormal indication based on physiology activity uh, and sleep and wake ups uh, indications. Uh, that's the way we do combine motion and physiology all together with other context models to get uh, to a superior uh, uh, fall uh, uh, detection. Um, in, in the sensitivity care, this is uh, uh, the value of combining physiology in means of true positive versus uh, false positive on the x-axis versus mon motion only uh, uh, sensors. Uh, and this is the way we combine everything together to assess continuous uh, monitoring, personal risk profile, uh, medication changes and gating assessment in order to uh, support that uh, uh, predictive uh, capabilities. This is the roadmap of the company. We do software as a service supporting all the daily uh, 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 risk uh, assessment uh, and the uh, 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 full indication as uh, I have spoken. We're developing together with Tel Aviv Hospital and with the global pharma uh, Parkinson disease vendor capabilities to monitor uh, extra gating and other activity physiology uh, uh, indicator for the stability of this type of uh, uh, patients. Uh, we are quickly adapting to a new remote patient monitoring reimbursement codes applied by the CMS about a year ago. Uh, we are under the process of uh, applying to class one exempt uh, uh, device that will enable providers, with, uh, senior living and home care uh, uh, providers to comply with that type of uh, reimbursement uh, based on continuous uh, uh, monitoring. We can do based on our uh, off the shelf uh, wearables Totally remote installation and training, which is very highly uh, important for those uh, risky population uh, these days. And uh, last message, we are installed uh, uh, in Israel in both uh, independent living and home health uh, uh, settings. Uh, we have aligned with a US channel partner 
just focus in the hospital and senior living in, in the uh, supplying uh, location-based services and we're going to supply our physiology monitoring, personal physiology monitor on top of those uh, uh, services. And we're about to install, hopefully, uh, next month in the US, uh, both senior living uh, uh, and, and uh, Medicare-based uh, home health uh, program uh, supported by the same uh, uh, provider. Uh, we are running here in Israel two important clinical studies. One is related to fall prevention in the community, and the other one is related to the uh, gating capabilities that I've uh, just uh, mentioned. Uh, I would uh, remind two use cases uh, that uh, brought uh, value in the last uh, two weeks during the, the COVID uh, period. We have uh, indication in the home health service for, for a lady, which uh, the, the machine have alerted about abnormal, you know, roaming uh, uh, scenarios, midnight and on, uh, which alerted, which uh, elevated their fall risk assessment for the other day. And during the following night, she has uh, fallen, automatically detected, and via the early, a risk alert, uh, her caregivers, the, the response center was able to respond uh, very quickly under that uh, scenario. And another daily abnormal, speaking about the other uh, comorbidities and, and risks that the seniors are experiencing, we had type of daily abnormal alert that the response center sent a, a, a physician to, to follow up and the lady was found uh, diagnosed with uh, testitis. So that type of uh, alert actually prevented her from going to hospitalization and getting her antibiotics plan uh, on the move. Gil, I'm sorry, we have to end now, I think uh, just in time. So yes. I'd like just, to ask yeah, you- Yeah, to, just to, last, last question, last sentence, please. Please. Uh, Potential uh, plans with uh, Sheba Hospital and other uh, uh, potential uh, partners or elderly personal triage data platform as, as uh, described before. Uh, and we are developing, as I said, uh, uh, Parkinson's disease home clinical uh, monitoring and on the way to converge that capabilities into a medical uh, grade service. Thank you for uh, listening. Thank you, Gil, and please, uh refer to the questions aimed to you at the chat. And last but not least, uh, I'd like to invite Vayar home, uh, offer familiar. The general manager is with us and will present the last technology for this webinar. So offer. Hi everyone. Uh, thanks for sticking in uh, so late. Um, can everyone see my screen at this point? Yes. Okay, good. So uh, my name is Offer Familiar. I'm a general manager of Vayar's home business unit. Uh, we're a company based out of Israel. Um, I'll give a bit of a background about the company. So the idea was that you have cameras and optic solutions that um, over the years have been deployed in many types of use cases, but all of them have at the end limitations that optics can only see um, through visible uh, uh, visible items, um, and uh, uh, as a company, what we started doing is developing uh, uh, radar imaging, which is basically a camera based on radio waves that enables uh, several uh, big advantages over traditional cameras. Um, one aspect is this Superman vision, uh, basically enabling penetrating through different materials and seeing through curtains or seeing through uh, uh, walls in certain cases, et cetera. The other aspect, which obviously applies to, to senior care a lot, is the privacy aspect. And uh, there's no image, there's no uh, camera image, there's no visible marks, uh, and there's no lens, more importantly. Um, so basically, we fully maintain a person's privacy. And lastly is the robustness of the system, basically, uh, uh, this technology is not sensitive to different light conditions or different weather conditions or uh, sun or fog or smoke. All of this is completely transparent to us. Um, 
the limitation other radar because we didn't invent radars. Radars have been around. What we've done is really add a lot of um, a lot of resolution while still maintaining a very small form factor and a very very small uh, bomb cost. Um, and through that, we're able to come from um, uh, something that looks a bit like the the image you see in the center. These are the best radar systems used in automotive today. Uh, and that's kind of what you see if you, if you point a radar at this image. Uh, and on the right here is basically what you see from our image. You see one person standing and leaning forward and you see the second person uh, sitting down, holding his hands up. And uh, not only that, we can actually also get the, uh, the vital signs out of that and I'll explain more about it in a second. Um, we're based out of Israel. We raised close to $200 million to date, uh, about 180 employees. Um, um, we operate in many different industries and have products uh, launched in different, uh, in different aspects that I can expand later. Um, originally, when we launched, the idea was actually to develop a new modality for breast cancer screening. So what you see here in the image is really a, a, an image from a clinical trial. Uh, that we've conducted um, were uh, the one on the left, that's a mammography, and the one on the right, um, that's kind of the image taken out of our system. This is something that looks like a thick bra. There's no X-ray, no ionizing technology at all. Uh, price point is about 100 times uh, less expensive um, than a traditional mammography system, uh, and obviously everything is very safe. And through that, we've actually started expanding to a lot of other different use cases. Many of them today are around monitoring people, monitoring the location, the posture, and the gait, the vital signs of people. And through that, we take this and build different products for different product areas. And one of the most strategic areas for us to date is uh, senior care, obviously. We've launched and have deployed a product called Wallabot Home about a year ago. And this detects falls. It's mounted on the wall and it detects falls. Um, at accuracy levels of uh, over 98% based on hundreds of tests. In general, we've deployed uh, 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 over 10,000 units already in, uh, in different areas, both in residential facilities and in senior care facilities, um, pretty much around the world, uh, North America and Europe, uh, China, Japan, Australia. So uh, in many places, we're also launching very soon a very, very small unit that is based on much higher frequencies. And this we've actually taken and expanded to a full, to a full monitoring system. Sorry guys, days of COVID. Uh, to a full monitoring system that doesn't just uh, provide the health indications, but actually provide the full dashboard of activities that I'll expand on in a second. Um, kind of trying to think when I was invited to speak here, I was trying to think uh, how COVID impacts us and what are the actions we're taking? How do we see ourselves fitting in a, a, a basically a, a new world, right, that is being created? Um, and we see ourselves uh, uh, fitting in, in three main issues that, um, that the world uh, is dealing with. Uh, hospitals and the ability to streamline and protect staff, uh, public domain areas, and how do we get people to go back to work while still maintaining safety? Uh, and homes, uh, residential, different facilities. How do we keep um, our seniors um, uh, safe, engaged, etc.? cetera? Um, I'll expand a little bit. Um, so we've been working recently very intensely with the Ministry of Defense in Israel and the Ministry of, through the Ministry of Health um, on basically providing remote uh, vital signs monitoring. Uh, from a distance, so um, it doesn't need to be attached to any to a specific bed or to attached to a specific chair, etc. But basically, from a distance, we are able to monitor uh, 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 heart rate, heart rate variability, respiration rate uh, uh, for people in different areas, uh, also in kind of the waiting hall. And um, this we've done uh, in quite some intense testing Re recently with the Ministry of Defense. So far, results look very, very, uh, very good, but obviously we've done a lot of adaptations for this use case. So we're um, like, we're now installed in one of the, one of the uh, military bases and, and we're likely starting uh, uh, trials very soon also in, a, in a, one of the hospitals in Israel. Uh, but this basically enables kind of taking triage measurements of people as they're waiting and being able to do a pre-screening as they come 
without the need for someone to replace, without the need for someone to sterilize the system, and without anyone needing to touch anything, basically keeping all the process very streamlined and very efficient. Um, within the public domain area, the areas that we're seeing are some in the short term that we're operating very intensely on and some in the midterm. Um, in the short term, basically the idea is because the system is very small, um, something around this size is the full system, um, and we, are, we started working with uh, some governments and some uh, uh, consumer electronic companies and service providers in being able to monitor hatches and entrances to buildings, to border control, um, to schools, to mass transport areas, um, where basically you'll be able on top of fever that is taken through kind of infrared cameras, uh, being able to take measurements of respiration and heart rate and get indications of other, um, other uh, COVID related symptoms. Um, and basically get real-time alerts on, on areas around that. Um, the more mid-term area that we're envisioning and working with some of our partners already on is how the world is going to look like in terms of maintaining hygiene as we, as we move forward. Um, um, uh, within that, um, we see a lot of need now for touchless user interface. Because of the resolution, we're able to actually uh, get uh, gesture control um, uh, at the fingertip level um, and through that we we're able to basically replace I'm sure everyone is um, is familiar with these areas and at these times is familiar with kind of taking either making sure you have gloves or taking a handkerchief and making sure you don't press the button uh, with your bare hands so eliminating the need to touch and um, but basically providing kind of a touchless user interface that's how we see things evolving based on our partnerships around that. Ofer, I will have to yeah. ask you to wrap up in a minute or two because we're no already five minutes past. No time. problem. Yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll do it in a minute. Um, within home, these are systems we already have deployed in quite a lot of different facilities where basically we monitor the activities against falls, but also um, all the activities, location of, of people in the rooms. Uh, in bed, out of bed, in the bathroom, how long they spent, how, how, uh, how many times they went there, how do they take their trips, gate, etc. These are all deployed systems that we have. Through that, we actually provide a full kind of reporting system and a dashboard and, and that gives insights about how you manage your facility on an individual basis and on a facility, and a facility management basis. The next in line is going more through health specific uh, indications that this is a, a little more down the road. Thank you very much. Sorry, sorry to keep you guys. Happy to take questions if you guys have. Thank you, Offer, and thank you for everyone for staying with us. Um, sorry for the minor delay. Um, I'd like to um, ask Inon to give some closing remarks. And of course, we will share with you uh, the presentation and the video. So, Hopefully that will be helpful. Inon? Thank you. Uh, I would like to thank you all for joining in and uh, hope that you benefited from uh, the webinar. Shiba, a global top 10 hospital, Amal Holdings, as well as the six uh, companies that presented are wonderful examples for the thousands of technology companies that you could partner with in Israel and that could help you be better and more efficient in your job. Uh, for those of you who uh, uh, for those of you who didn't hear, Israel operates 44 economic missions uh, globally, and uh, uh, these missions are non-for-profit organizations that aim at uh, bring sorry uh, that aim at bring together Israeli companies that global and global partners. Together with the Israeli Export Institute, we also partners with the embassies and consulates as well as Chamber of Commerce. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us from the country that you are based to explore thousands of Israeli startups and companies offering innovative solutions. In addition, we welcome you to visit our global website. Thank you to Lital, Galia, Gad, and Amir from Sheba, and to Tovi from Amal Holdings for your partnerships to the companies for their presentations, as well as to my counterparts in the economic missions and my colleagues at the embassies and the consulates. A uh, special shout out to our friends at the Israeli Doctors of America for their assistance. Um, 
just let me take this out. Okay. Uh, in Israel and around the world, Jewish people will begin celebrating the festival of Passover, which is also known in Hebrew as the holiday of freedom. For the last several weeks, most of us have been living under conditions of isolation, and many of us know people who have been suffering with illness in need of relief and cheer. Therefore, during this time of the year, when we reflect on what it means to have freedom and opportunity, I would like to thank you all for your efforts and engagements to bring this terrible pandemic to a swift end. On that note, I wanna wish a joyful holiday season filled with light and healing and happiness and inspiration to everyone celebrating around the world. And last but not least, our gratitude to all the first responders as well as the entire medical ecosystem. We respect and appreciate your commitment and hope that we will continue to healthy and resilient as we explore ways to develop and expand our partnerships. I would also like to invite you to future webinars that the Israeli uh, Ministry of Economy and Industry, the Foreign Trade Administration, together with the Israeli Export Institute will uh, produce soon and uh, to thank you all. Thanks.